Hi, I'm Kate Ahern, the Sangoma, and you're very welcome to the Sangoma TV. This is the first video of seven videos in which we'll be exploring the notion of you as um, an energetic being as opposed to just a physical being. And also we'll be exploring energy in our thoughts and also energy in our emotions. So when I talk about energy, what comes into your head? And you might say, well, I never use my energy. But in fact, I'm going to show you examples in which you might be using your energy. And um, one of those would be when you come into a room and you pick up a vibe of somebody. So a vibe is, a, is another form of uh, energy called a vibration. Um, and on a personal level, then, if you ever had uh, butterflies in your tummy before an exam or before an interview, that's, again, you're using energy in an energy center there. If you ever had um, a pain in your heart uh, through grief or upset, or um, if you um, had an, an uplifted heart when you were in love, that's your another he heart center. And um, moving up then, if you ever had a lump in your throat when you found it difficult to say something to somebody, that's also another energy center. So we actually have seven energy centers that we're going to be exploring over the next seven weeks. So you'll be getting to know and understand them a little bit more and about the role that they play in your life. And um, when we start talking about energy, um, we, we start at the very beginning. So um, I've been very lucky in my work through being a midwife uh, that I actually saw babies coming into the world. And also as my work as a nurse, I also saw people leaving this world. So I always had a keen interest in um, energy and spirit and um, I wanted to know where it all began. So through years of, of studying and um, reading up on lots of things, um, I came up with a method called the Sangoma Way in which I teach people how to understand a little bit about what makes them tick. So when we talk about energy, we are going to begin at the beginning and that's a conception. So when the sperm meets the ova and these two cells um, meet, they start to form uh, another clump of cells and um, eventually what that clump of cells then forms is um, a heart. So as early as five to six weeks, you know, a lady could go for a scan and uh, see the little heartbeat there. And um, scientists are now beginning to realize that we actually have more neurons in our heart than we have in our brain. And at this early stage, yes, there's a little bit of the brain there, but it's quite rudimentary in this small little bit of a spinal cord, but it's actually the heartbeat um, that is sending a message out to the little growing fetus and, and giving it the message to, to grow. And there's a point in the heart called the pacemaker, and the pacemaker sends a little electrical charge to the heart, it tells the heart to beat, the heart beats then and sends a message to every single cell in the body. But not only does it send it to the cells in the body, because it's an electrical beat, it sets up an electrical magnetic field. So it's also sending a vibe or a wave outside of our body. So this is where we get what we call the aura. Okay. So your aura is something outside of your body and it's also called the emotional body. So it's where emotions can sit. And um, it's now been proven that there's actually seven major energy centers sitting on seven major endocrine organs in the body. Now this all sounds very technical, but when we go over this in the next few weeks, you'll get an understanding of how this applies to you on a personal level. And on this notion of an electricity, modern medicine recognizes that if the heart stops to beat, what does it do? It gets an electrical charge. Also, if they want to read the heart, they put an ECG, electrocardiograph, and they read the electrical rhythm of the heart. Also, there are electrical waves in the brain. So we read the brain waves with an EEG. So modern medicine recognizes that we're electrical or we are energy fields. So um, what happens then in times of stress is that this is lovely working when we're in sync or in flow or we're calm. And what happens then is when we go out and become stressed, we lose this lovely 
rhythm and we go out of sync. So when we're out of sync, there is a lack of ease in the body which leads to disease. And it's now been proven that 80% of all known diseases caused by stress. So wouldn't it be nice to understand where that all stems from and having an understanding of yourself in order to reduce stress in your life. So we're going to focus today on the very first or root chakra, which is a chakra is another name for a spinning wheel. And um, the root chakra is the first center of energy that we're going to focus on. And that's got to do with the adrenal glands in your body. So on a physical level, these two glands sit on your kidneys. And when you need to run out of a field, if there was a bull chasing you, well, that's the, the adrenaline that's pumped through your body to give you that sense of fight or flight. So we need adrenaline in our body. However, if we're in a state of stress where we're sitting in one spot and it's our thoughts or our emotions that are causing stress in our body and we've no way of burning that off and that adrenaline is pumping around in the body, well then that leads to disease or lack of ease. So in order to bring about a focus for you this week, we're going to focus on your root chakra. So this guy here, and this has got to do with the consciousness of safety and security. So issues around money, issues around the roof over your head, issues around the food on the table, um, based on the, the notion of am I safe and secure? So a lot of us are driven by fear of not feeling safe. So if we focus on our root chakra, we're talking about our feet, our legs, up to our pubic area. And the color we're going to focus on here is the color red. So wearing a color red can actually help to um, bring around that notion of grounding or rooting yourself. The notion of the tree who has strong roots will grow to be strong. Again, that would apply to ourselves. If we're up in our head and very busy, well then bringing our attention down to our feet will actually take us out of our head and bring us down to where it, there should be. So. I'd be only too delighted to hear what and how you get on. And um, if you're not already receiving these videos, please put your name and your email address in the box above my head. And uh, if you'd like to share these videos, um, please feel free to do so. So I'll see you next week. And in next week, we'll be exploring this notion a little bit further around thoughts and energy and how we can pull them back into where um, they belong and then propel us onto a life or a better direction, one of purpose and one that is going to make our life more fulfilling. So I look forward to seeing you next week and uh, I'll talk to you then. Bye.